Alright, so I want to explain some of the lore on build. Um, people ask me questions and kind of want to know what works best for them. And I'll kind of explain what I was doing and then other options you can use. I don't have all the parts because some of them are installed, but I can explain kind of the processing. So normally most people have an octopus board, right? And you have a pie and you need to have a CAN bus system. Now, in most cases, they don't work with these combined. So you have a device called a UC2, which is a, an intermediate piece that links this guy to this guy, but also brings in a CAN bus system via USB, so they all talk together. And so this is what the initial setup was gonna be. And for some reason, my USB-C port or something along that line stopped communicating with the Pi. And so they wouldn't work or it would work, but it'd be intermittent, it would kick in, kick out. And I honestly, I hate having these two plus another third board. It's too much confusion, too much annoyance inside my thing. I just I don't like the clutter. So the other option is which I'm running now. Uh, so this is a version two, but I have the version one Manta eight. Um, it's a really good one um, combined with, this is um, the Canvas system. This is version two, we'll get into that in a second. So we have the 2209, EBB inside the tool head and so it runs a CAN bus system. The Manta MP4 or M8P version 1 does not have a CAN bus system so it needs to have the UC2 involved. Some of those you'll see it I have it posted on there so that brings in the CAN bus then links it to the board. The big drawback is USB ports are not very good when you need to have a bunch of them and they're all powered options. So that guy communicates via USB to the UC2, which then goes to the CAN bus, which leaves you one free USB slot. Well, you need that USB slot for a screen potentially, because mine runs the HDMI 5, which is only powered by USB. And I took out my buck converter and my USB uh, 25 to 5 volt converter um, and if I did want to use it it's tip end it, it doesn't work um, so I have to use USB which now I have to have a splitter in there and then I also run the Eddy Duo which is required for USB because the CAN bus system is occupied inside the tool head because I have a Konomi that uses it for power it's it's a mess. They it, the systems work well, but not well together, which sucks. So that bearing in mind, if you have the version two MAP, there is a CAN bus header right there. You plug it in, you run the power to one of these little bad boys. Done. There's no UC two. There's no configurating. You plug it in, it works. It's done. It's mild calibrations and settings, and you don't have to try to jerry rig system to work now this is the system where you got to figure out this is a version 2 and as you can see it's got some pretty large connectors in it now imagine these connectors being a quarter the size that's what the version 1 has they're like micro GS JSTs they are a pain I broke off so many I gave up and I just decided to run the gauge cable through zip ties over my um, umbilical because I just, or they'd get in there and then they'd pop out. As soon as you move to open tool head to get something, they'd just break. It, it was not good. The new ones, um, cause I bought mine a long time ago. The newer 2209 ones do come with pre-crimped, which is great. Now you can just simply plug them in, you splice them and you're done. These ones don't come pre-crimped, but these ones are easy to crimp. So, you can choose the difference. The downside is, is these ones, your fans have one power option. So they better be 24 volt together. Don't run a five and 24, you're gonna fry one of them. Or underpower the other, depending on how you have it pinned. So that's the only drawback. These are nice boards, um, but they are also an issue. So depending on how you wanna do it, but they all hook up the same. Um, other than that, so yeah. But when it comes to configuring them, they're pretty much all identical. You flash the drives with the CAN bus system, um, keeping in mind that the, the CB1 or the Pi communicate via USB. So you flash these guys 
the same way you'd flash them without using a canvas. And there's a whole guide onto this, I won't get into it. So ask me, question me, I can show you the guide. Maybe even guide you if you need it, because I spent upwards of eight hours trying to program that sucker into making it work, and it was not ideal. Um, I had used resources of a few people that are content creators and work with Big Tree to get it to work like perfect and confirm that I was doing it right because I just it was getting frustrated. But once it's set up, it's amazing. And here I'll show you what it does look like. Now that it's set up, right? We're calibrating it, but we've got our Kenomi. We have the fans and all the head stuffs in here. We've also done the CAN bus through the back. Goes up and over. You can see my cables here. Um, one is my thermistor. The green one is my Z stop. Goes into the back, loops down around, back into the system underneath, and then from there, I won't show it because the machine's printing, but it's pretty simple. And I made um, a bracket if anyone's curious for using as DIN rail attachment as well as an actual attachment for the UC2 or C, yeah, UC2. So, but yeah, no, and if you have any questions, um, definitely ask. I will be as much helpful as I can because I mean, I've spent more time than I care to count. But if you do the option, I do recommend going to version two with the CB1. And oh, also, I learned this the hard way. So I bought the good LCD touchscreen through Big True Tech. I will give you one sec, I'll go grab it. All right, so this is the Pi TFT50 version two. It runs on a D5 cable, I believe. It's a ribbon cable. Um, it works great with the Pi because um, it connect in. It also works well with say like an octopus board because it has a built in. I believe mine does not, but I think the newer ones do. Um, double check, I can't 100% sure. But the unfortunate part is, is that the CB1, the original one, um, I think the version two does now, it's also like three times the price now, does not accept this cable. It will not read it. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're gonna upgrade, if you have one of these screens and you wanna go to a CB1, the version one, it will not work. I had to use HDMI 5, upgraded it, so it uses an HDMI mini port off of the board itself and a USB to power it. So, you know, this powers it all, talks to it all. There's nothing else required. So keep that in mind when you do upgrade or if you are changing features, don't be like me, buy it, think it's gonna work, and then it doesn't. Also, to be fair, um, this board, which was the original board, this is what we worked with, stopped working, so I had no choice. But normally, I would have not done this because I wouldn't have gone this road. Anyways, I'm gonna keep it short from there. But yeah, keep that in mind that not everything is compatible, even though you think it is. And with that, I will let you go. And if you have any questions, please let me know and we will try to point you in the right direction to make sure that your build experience is better and more correlated than having to fight it and get frustrated and wanting to quit.